Hey everyone, I'm Jay, and welcome to another intro to Python Lab. Uh, today we're doing Lab 6.15, that's the 15th in our series. Uh, today's lab is about lists and tuples. Uh, they're very much like arrays from other programming languages. Uh, there are a couple of differences between the two. Uh, so I have a simple program right here. This is uh, the lab here. Uh, I have a series of quote binary numbers. I've written them as strings. Okay. Uh, I have an Aaron space right there. Um, so I have my binary numbers. This one is the tuple and you'll see the difference. The first one is a tuple. The second one is the list and the big difference that hopefully you can see on your screen is the first one has parentheses around it and the second one has square brackets around it. That's how Python determines which one is a tuple and which one is a list. First one is tuple, all right. Second one is a list. Mm, list, there we go. I just put that differently so I don't get that curly here. Tuple is the first one, and the list is the second one. Again, today I'm using PyCharm, so I got a lot more of a little squiggly line. PyCharm really wants me to format things their way. That's fine. Uh, so the tuple and the list, they are pretty much identical. Uh, I don't think they have all the same functions to work with them. They have a little bit different purposes. Uh, the tuples cannot be changed. Once you set it, that's it. Uh, they are what we call immutable. You can't change them, which is great if you want to set a value to something in your program and you want to make sure that you can't even accidentally change it if you try. Um, that's great if you want to set some value uh, and make sure that it stays the same. Right? It is uh, sometimes important to have a value that can't be changed. Uh, lists, however, they are totally changeable. Um, we use lists or arrays very often in programming, especially in loops like we've been paying attention to in the last couple of labs. Oftentimes we will loop, we'll use a counter or an iterator, and we'll be able to access, we'll be able to loop through this list and access each one. Uh, so we're not going too in depth on the list on this one, this lab, uh, but we are going to see just a little bit of the difference between the list and the tuple and how we can access individual uh, items or elements or members of that list or tuple. All right, hopefully you don't get too hung up on the uh, on the language or the jargon of this. In in my assignments, we're mostly going to be using lists, right? Um, but just know that tuple is something that exists. And for me, I think if you say array, uh, that's fine. We're talking about lists, okay? Lists and arrays, base to me, that's the same thing. Um, so. Here, tuple slash list demo. I have a little welcome message. Uh, so I've created my tuple, I've created my list, uh, and these are just the numbers one through eight, one's in binary, and one's in English. Uh, and then the nice thing about both tuples and list, if you want to print out the entire thing, you just say print, give it the name of the variable, and uh, I can't see my output. Let's see. Here's my output down here. You can see that it will just print the entire tuple over the entire list, and it will put that parentheses or square bracket at the beginning and end, so you can see that you did indeed print either a tuple or a list. So that's pretty cool um, that Python does that for us. Uh, makes it very easy to print the entire list or the entire tuple. But if you want to access uh, just 
one element. Uh, here I'm printing uh, just the first, the third, and the eighth element of the binary numbers. And you'll notice I said the first and it's number zero, and I said third and it's number two, and I said the eighth and it's number seven. That's because arrays or lists or tuples start counting at zero. Uh, and the reason why it counts at zero, if we go all the way back to the C language, where an array was actually just a memory location, and the memory location plus zero units is the first spot. Uh, when C was created, they said, OK, we're going to create an array. and uh, you give it a variable type, let's say it's an integer, so we make space for x number of integers. And the very first one was whatever the memory location with an offset of zero. Okay, so you start counting at zero because that is the offset from the beginning of the array or the beginning of the list. Um, when we get into higher functioning programming languages, the lists don't necessarily don't always have a determined variable type. Some do, some don't. All right. Uh, make sure that you know which is which in your programming language that you are using. And also keep in mind that uh, some languages allow you to have different data types in your list. Uh, Python is one of those languages that you can have different data types in your list, uh, but not every language will allow that. All right, um, and I believe the same thing goes for a tuple, uh, although tuple is fairly unique to Python. Um, so generally, they are most of the time they're going to be the same data type all the way through, uh, because that is a restriction on some languages. Oftentimes, it's a restriction on uh, the way we build a program, uh, but that's not. 100% true all of the time. Okay. Um, so I'm able to access individual elements. So this print statement, I'm going to print the zero element of binary numbers, which is get binary numbers offset of zero, which is the first element. All right. Next one, I'm going to access. I don't have to print. I could do some math with it. I could do some if statement test or a while loop test, or or I could reassign it to something. Uh, can't reassign this one because it's a tuple. But if I want to access this here, binary numbers offset of two binary numbers offset of zero, one, two, it's going to be the third value in there. All right. Uh, and the same goes for all the rest of these. So I've created my tuple and I've created my list. I've output my tuple, the entirety of it. I've output my list, the entirety of it. I've output some individual elements of the tuple and the list. And then last, I'm going to output alternating, uh, starting with the list and then the tuple. Uh, and you also notice that when I'm accessing individual elements, I'm using this square bracket. That's the array notation, right? That's fairly universal across languages. Uh, not too many differences there. Uh, we're going to use the square bracket and then the offset of that array. So if you want the very first one, remember that's going to be zero. If you want the very last one, uh, you either. Oh, the line goes across here. I'm wondering why pie chart was yelling at me. Um, if you want the last number, some languages, and Python is one of them, allow you, they have built-in function to get the length of the list, okay? Uh, things like C++, it's quite difficult to get the length of the list. You need to know what it is when you create the list from the beginning. Um, in other languages, they do allow you to continually add element to the end of the list, sometimes to the beginning of the list, and sometimes insert them to the middle of the list as well. Um, and then there's, if you have the ability to do all that, 
almost always you're going to also have the ability to get the length at any point in time, which is useful if you want to get the last element in the list. If you're working with a language like C++, uh, all of these are just memory locations, and if you have an array that is 10 elements long, and if you tell it to access the 13th element on the array, C++ is going to go, yeah, sure, let's get the 13th element of the array. And it's going to offset 13 elements across, grab whatever data happens to be in memory in that location, and give it to you. Very dangerous. Okay, other languages have updated that uh, and prevented you from doing so. That comes at a cost of uh, efficiency, right? Uh, C++ is highly efficient because it requires that the programmer writes uh, more strict code and then they don't have to in the language. Uh, Python puts that stuff into the language. If I try to access the 12th element here and I run this, okay, I'm going to get an error that says index out of range. I tried to access something that was beyond the last element on the chart here, or on the tuple. So let me put that back there and you will see that, of course, that was off the screen. This last one, this is the one that I changed. Um, let me change a different one here. Let me try to access the 20th element first. Okay. And then scroll down and rerun this. And it's going to say, I'm up 20. All right. That is out of range. Now, it doesn't tell me exactly where I went out of range. It just says list index out of range. It's somewhere on this line. And of course, I can look on the line and I know where it is. Um, it's the first one right there, the one that's accessing the line uh, item 20 on a list that's only eight feet long. Uh, but there are a lot of built in uh, functions for lists and for tuples. I definitely encourage you to have a look at some of those functions and see how they might be useful to you. But as far as this lab goes, uh, that is all we're doing here. We're just going to create a couple and access them. And that's it. Nothing too too difficult. All right. Uh, so that's Lab 6.15. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.